What's up, everyone? Welcome to the channel. Let's try that again. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the channel. My name is Philly Beats You. And in this video, we're going to be discussing 12 things that you need to do to prepare for the Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC expansion pass, Isle of Armor. 14 days from now. It's coming up. So this, this is going to be really important. Number one, you want to completely beat Pokemon Sword and Shield. You got to beat the game. It, you catch a legendary... Beat the game. If you want to do all the content, that should run you about 30 to 40 hours. And if you just want to breeze through it without doing all the extra side quests, that should be about 15 to 20 hours. Should take you about that much time if you put in the effort for that. Number two is that you want to catch yourself every single Gigantamax Pokemon that is available to you in Pokemon Sword and Shield. So the ones that you can get right now in general, whether it be trades, which you can get in our Discord down in the description below, as well as hunting via raid dens are Charizard, Butterfree, Pikachu, Meowth, Machamp, Gengar, Kingler, Lapras, Eevee, Snorlax, Garbodor, and then Melmetal is a little bit special to get. So it, it's not, I don't think it's out yet. And then we have Corviknight, Orbeetle, Dreadnought, Colossal, Flapple, Appleton, which basically become the same exact G Max. Then you have Sandaconda, Toxicity, Santa Scorch, Hatterene. Grimmsnarl, All Cream, Copper Raja, Duraudadon. Everything that I show in this video is going to be listed down below so you can click on the links and see it for yourself. Now, the ones I didn't mention are going to be in the DLC. So, for example, you're going to be getting yourself Venusaur, Blastoids in the DLC, probably Melmetal, even though it's technically available right now. The G Max forms of Rillaboom, Cinderace, and Inteleon, which we will talk about as well in the DLC. Yeah, and then of course Urshifu, which will be either fighting dark or fighting water. Moving on to point number three. Number three, complete your Pokedex. Completing your Pokedex is probably one of the most important things because one, you see every Pokemon, it registers that you got them all. And then you also get a shiny charm for completing it, which is great because shiny hunting gives you cool looking Pokemon that are different variants from the original Pokemon. So you want to do that and complete that. There are plenty of guides on the internet showing you guys how to do that. Number four on the list is completing the Pokedex in Pokemon Home. What's important about this is that you'll be able to transfer those Pokemon to your game eventually when those Pokemon are made available within the DLC. Also, you get a really cool Magirna for completing the whole entire Pokedex. So I would highly suggest you guys work on that as well. Number five on the list is to create a living Pokedex. Now, if you're super bold and brave, you can try to do a shiny living Dex, but... <laughs> Let me tell you something, that's gonna probably take you about five years to do. But if you wanna be normal and hunt regular Pokemon, you can create a living Dex, which includes every single Pokemon, as you can see on this Reddit post here, which I will also link down in the description below so you guys can see this and the amount of work you have to put in for this. But you get every single Pokemon, you account for every gender difference, you get every single variation of a Pokemon. For example, you have unknown and you have all the alphabet letters. That's like every variation. And then you have different forms of Pokemon. Various Pokemons have different forms, including one from this generation. You have Owl Cream over here. A lot of different forms, so you want to get that as well. And, um, and if you want to be super extra, you can get one of every ability. But that's, that's a little over the top, but that's up to you. This is found below at Reddit. I'll link this down in the description below so you guys can take a look at this. But this is probably one of the coolest things. And I'm probably going to do this before Pokemon Sword and Shield by going back to my old games like Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and Moon, X and Y. It's going to be a good time. Number six on the list is to start preparing for, new, for, for the new feature called Restricted Sparring by having a variety of Pokemon ready to go. According to the Pokemon website, oh, let me go. Now I gotta go to the Pokemon website. Uh... As you can see on their website, it says the Eye of Armor. The Eye of Armor will also introduce a way to challenge yourself to some new battles. With restricted sparring, you'll be limited in what types of Pokemon you can use and forced to battle under set conditions. This means you wanna have a very wide variety of Pokemon. I don't know, maybe they're gonna make you do a Magic Carp battle, or probably the most useless Pokemon you've ever had will be required to be used in this event. So collecting all the Pokemon as mentioned before, super important because you can use them in restricted sparring. So do not forget about this feature. Start preparing ahead of time so you don't get stuck. That's why you should have a living Dex of every single Pokemon so you can use them at any given time for whatever situation arises in Pokemon. 
Number seven on the list. This is a fun, shiny Pokemon challenge that you guys can do. But it's super important to note that these specific shiny Pokemon can only be done before the DLC via egg hatching. So one is being able to get all the hidden ability starter Pokemon, which you can check out in this video I've done over here. And what you want to do is basically try to hatch a shiny hidden ability version of them. The other thing you want to do is probably get a shiny Galarian Slowpoke, which is absolutely amazing. It's golden Slowpoke. And you're going to want to be one of the first people to evolve it into a shiny slow bro. You, you're going to want to do it. You're going to, it's, it, I mean, come on. It's, it's Mega Man slow bro with a cannon. You, you, you definitely want to do it. Number eight is really important on this list that you want to start making your early decisions in the game. Now you are, number eight is extremely important because you want to start making your early decisions in this expansion pass. In the trailer, you can see you're presented with a choice of getting a Bulbasaur or a Squirtle. Most likely, one of these guys, or both of them, are going to have the ability to G-Max already without you using any features to get them to G-Max. So, pick wisely which one you want to get. And going back to their evolutions, and going through their evolutions, you're either going to have G-Max move, G-Max Vine Lash, which is very hard to say on the mouth. If you pick Bulbasaur, you'll have access to G-Max move G max vine slash which basically doesn't just deal damage to an opponent when it hits it will continue to deal damage for four turns to any pokemon that isn't a grass type same exact thing when we look at blastoids blastoids is the G max move G max cannonade so if you pick squirtle G max cannonade just as a deal damage to opponent when it hits it will continue to deal damage for four turns to any pokemon that isn't water type so you want to be aware of which one you're going to pick the next big decision that you're going to have to make in this game is choosing which evolution Kubfu is going to evolve into. Now, you can either go with single strike style or rapid strike style. Now, you might be wondering, what the heck's the difference? Because they both, they both do the exact same thing. The difference between these two Pokemon is one is fighting dark and one is fighting water. Now, a cool way to remember which one does what is you strike from the dark once and then water moves rapidly. So you, you, you do multiple strikes. Okay, that, that, that's it. That's all I have to say about <laughs> how to remember which one is what. Bruh. Both of these forms can Gigantamax. One will be red and one will be blue, signifying, you know, the water one is, is going to be blue and the dark one is going to have some red to it. And yeah, th these are really cool. So your decision based off which type you like, maybe you're going just by aesthetics. It's totally up to you, but make your decision ahead of time so you're not stuck staring at the screen for about 40 minutes and going online and typing up which one should I get when it comes to these Pokemon. So these are the decisions that you're going to have to make. So choose wisely, friends. Number nine on this list is preparing for Max Soup. Now, according to the Pokemon website, Max Soup is a special dish made from rare ingredients you can gather on the Isle of Armor. If a Pokemon with great hidden potential drinks Max Soup, it'll become a special Pokemon capable of Gigantamaxing. What this means is you can bring in your Score Bunny, your Grookey, and your Sobble. Also, if you have an extra Squirtle or Bulbasaur, that's not the one you pick. You should bring them as well because those Pokemon all get access to Gigantamaxing and most likely you'll be able to use Max Soup on them. So do not forget your hidden ability ones that you can get from Pokemon Home definitely should be the ones you bring on this adventure and get them to Gigantamax. Really cool stuff here. So get that ready. Number 10 on this list is the Cram-O-Matic. Now, you can already start preparing tons of items right now. You're in Pokemon Sword and Shield. You can stack up on a bunch of junk items as much as you can. Stack up on them because here's what it says. The dojo on the Isle of Armor houses a unique take on recycling in the form of a device called the cram -O If you feed it four items, it will combine them and give you a new item in exchange. New item in exchange. You can, re you can receive any variety of items including Pokeballs, PP Ups, and more. Some combinations might produce rare items. And the thing is, there might even be new items we're not even aware of yet. So stacking up on a bunch of junk items in order to throw them in the Cram-O-Matic and you can spam this, you can get a ton of cool new items in the DLC. So go ahead, start preparing for this. Stack up on your items as well. Number 11 on this list is know which Pokemon are on the islands and the possible raid dens and the Pokeballs you possibly want to catch them with. Now, Luckily, we have Cerebi.com, which has documented all the Pokemon we have seen so far. And if you come back to this video, if anything is revealed, this exact link will update you on all the Pokemon on the island. So, of course, you already have the ones we mentioned about Kubfu, Urshifu, 
Then you have your, your new Gigantamax forms. And then here's all the cool returning Pokemon, which I'll just do a quick scroll through so you guys can see over here. There you go. These Pokemon were all seen in the trailers or they've been documented. And these are 100% confirmed Pokemon that are coming back again the link for this is going to be down in the description below. You can start preparing your Pokemon teams accordingly because most likely these Pokemon on this island or this expansion coming out will probably have max raid dents and you want to have the appropriate Pokemon to take on these ones. And finally, this brings us to point number 12. This one is an optional one, but it's super important if you want to make your life in Pokemon a very wholesome and lasting experience. Number 12 on this list is basically to get involved with a community. Community is the easiest way of getting tasks done in Pokemon Sword and Shield. You can go in raid dens with certain people. People can reroll shiny raid dens if that's even possible in the DLC. If you need a Pokemon that's not available in your version, having community means you can trade with those people and get what you need. I think that's one of the most important things in the game, squatting up as well. Now, as a reminder, I'm going to be doing a 24-hour stream the day of release of this game on twitch.tv slash you. Go ahead, check out the link that's also in the description below, follow it, and join us because the community is going to be working together that day to conquer the DLC. We're going to take it down. It's going to be one of the coolest Pokemon streams you've ever been to before. Now, we also have a Discord server, which I've mentioned multiple times in this video, that you should join and start getting ready for Pokemon Sword and Shield Isle of Armor because we'll have our community ready to go to trade certain Pokemon other people can get if you need certain things, go ahead and ask it in the Pokemon chats. That Discord link is going to be down in the description below. Do not forget to join it. I, like I said, community is big. I could even finish some things in Pokemon Sword and Shield without doing that. So yes, that is the list, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you really enjoyed this video uh, and start preparing for Pokemon Sword and Shield's expansion, the Isle of Armor. I am super excited. New content in Pokemon makes me feel like the game is being re-released again. And I really like that. And on top of that, we got another DLC part two coming out later on after this. But let's focus on Isle of Armor for now. And we'll do some more videos on Isle of Armor. So again, like this video if you enjoyed it. If you disliked the video, double tap the dislike button. Comment down below what you guys think and any other tips you suggest for the community. And I will see you guys in the next Pokemon video. Take care. This is Philly Beats You, and I'm out. <laughs>